Hello everybody, um, this is Crotavel here, and the purpose of this video is going to be covering how to perform crew kills in FTL without having to board enemy ships. Uh, so there will be a series of clips trying to discuss various tactics that can be utilized to get uh, bio kills or crew kills on enemy ships. The idea being that you kill off the enemy crew versus destroying the hull of the ship. Uh, these tend to yield better rewards in that you get higher scrap rewards for crew kills often. Uh, you can also get into a special reward where you get the extra fuel out of storage, as well as a 1 in 9 chance of getting a crew member and a 1 in 9 chance of getting a item. This is a completely safe fight. We could easily, easily 100% win this just by mind controlling them and then shooting down here, but I'm going to try to initiate an O2 hack to kind of show what that looks like. So we see that they have level 1 oxygen. In fact, you can see exactly how much O2 they have here. One of the weird things about hacking a system is the hack continues even after the system is destroyed. So we'll see if we get it here. Oh, no, nope, gotta dodge. That's okay. Still try and break the O2. Alright. So now we're delaying the repair and slowly the O2 is just leaving the ship. Now we're going to let them repair it. Um, if you want, you can actually let them repair it faster by disengaging the hack. If the idea is to set up uh, another O2 drain. Also, I just want to set up to show you how it keeps actually functioning. The hack does, even when the system's busted. So, what we should do now, like if I was doing a normal kill, we'd actually let them out, break the system again, and then make them punch down the doors to get back into the O2. But I want the mind control here to lower evasion. Alright, so we hit the O2. And the oxygen is at 34%, but the hack continues on. You can see that it rapidly drains the O2. Now, fire actually does consume O2. So there's going to be way less oxygen in this room than any other rooms. So that's a pretty straightforward O2 kill. Uh, and... Determining, like, what kind of kills you should... Oh, nice! Extra fuel out of storage. That is a crew kill uh, reward exclusive. Um, we don't get any other consumables, so we don't get missiles, we don't get drone parts. But, yeah, six fuel, pretty high reward, plus 21 scrap in the sector. Till we should be safe for the first volley, because this fires at 9 seconds, then 18 seconds. This fires at 17. So we can just do a shield hack, I think. And set up for fire beam shenanigans. So, one of the ways you set up any beam, it really is just to do a shield hack, drain the shields completely, then your beam, which never misses, connects. Uh, you can even use this, with, like, with other beam weapons, you can do, like, a bunch of damage to their ship, uh, particularly if you're able to, like, clip their piloting, and then, like, your projectile shots are able to get through. Okay, um, so I really want to start a three tile fire in their oxygen and then maybe start one in their weapons. I'll put two shots into their weapons. It's just a mind control here. All right, not actually gonna fire the heavy laser here. Again, the point isn't to kill the ship as fast as possible. The point is to get a crew kill. Now, with no medical unit, even though they have a rock crew member here, they're in pretty bad position. Alright, we're actually going to open up the hack, because I want them out of the shield room. Or, I'm sorry, I want them out of the piloting, into the shield room. So, their evasion.
confusion should be pretty low. Nice. And the O2 has gone offline. So even though this is partially why I'm not a particular fan of uh, fire beam strategies, is it's like auto ships don't care about fire beams. NGs have a tendency to put it out pretty quickly. A couple rocks can put it out because they actually do have a bonus in uh, taking out fires. <laughs> But, um, so there's just like a lot of scenarios where it's not very good, plus it takes like 20 seconds, which is a pretty long time. In my opinion for uh, the volley. But it should be good here. The other 2 isn't low enough yet, none of them have broke off to like try and get that repaired. <laughs> Uh, now they have. Now they're like, uh-oh. Things are very bad. Yeah, I don't have sensors to see particularly how bad the uh, fires have been spreading. We can even delay them just by giving them something else to put out. There we go. So yeah, like one of the key aspects in t sometimes in trying to get uh, fire fire kills, particularly against rock crew members, is just taking out the oxygen. All right. So we're gonna, I guess, talk about anti bio beam. Um, so if you're not safe, you really have to make yourself safe. So we'll actually start with the weapons here, though. Um, if we're in the shield room, at most we're only gonna take a. Uh, a single damage from this setup. But normally I like to at least have a breach in the weapons, uh, force them to do a lot of repairs before we actually do beam swipes. Okay, so I'll switch off this, and now we go bio beam. Get back on the weapons for a faster charge time. So the only real trick about bio beam is it has to go through the tile that the enemy is in, uh, they, and uh, just have to pay attention to how the crew can move. So sometimes, like if you do a swipe that goes through piloting first, then the engine's crew person could like move up to piloting to refill the position, and then your beam swipe misses. <laughs> Also, so now we know that the breach has been repaired. Um, so that caused a fire, which is fine. And we only need probably two swipes to be done with this. Oh, neat. The fire went out because of the uh, breach that had occurred over there. So there's our swipe, again through the tiles. What we have here is the coffin ship. Noted because the oxygen is actually not connected with the main part of the ship. Uh, good enough. So hopefully we can get through this without having to uh, use the drone part. I'm assuming that this is a breach missile. Slug ships, if they have a giant missile on them, um, the breach is the only one in the item pool. So we should have a 100% chance of dodging. Or we should have a 100% chance of our cloak coming up. We're actually 3% short of uh, total dodge. Okay, that'll be my two damage. Nice. And now what we actually can do to sort of keep track of the O2 depletion is you can just turn yours off. And it's slow and arduous, but again, most things in FTL in terms of like crew kills or optimal play is going to be slow. Let's 
uh, get them something else to work on. Reset the repair on the missile. Uh, it is worth noting that if you're doing, you're fighting this ship in normal or easy mode, that this slug is actually going to be in the main part of the ship and not in engines. So the strategy I'm using of keeping this one just repairing the weapons and or shields isn't quite going to work. Because there's going to be two crew over there. Alright, so again, they should be pretty low on O2. I think we can just wait it out at this point. This is a breach. It's going to take about 20 plus seconds to fire. We have cloak up. And we'll be good to go. One and two. They have a clone bay and a teleporter. So this is a strategy we should be able to pull off without really needing to use either hacking or mind control. So the AI is going to want to board us twice. This happens unless it's an elite fighter, um, the rebel flagship, or uh, if you initiate a hack on their teleporter and it's an event where the it has like event teleporting crew members. So like the three of them jump on board and beacon and they try and teleport more over. Then they just keep funneling crew over uh, for the entirety of the fight. But normally, normally what the AI does is they try to board you twice, okay? So in this scenario, the Mantis should board first and then the NG. We're gonna let the Mantis come on board. All right, yeah, they figure out what they're doing. Okay. So what we can do is we can engage the Mantis over here start venting and ideally we get the mantis to below like 15 15 health open up all the doors and then run our character out of there. Yay, Sophie's alive. We want them to go back. All right, and they're on their way back. So it helps is if they don't have a med bay or they have a clone bay. So now we're waiting and they're going to try and send another crew member over. The AI recognizes that this crew member doesn't have enough health or is too low on health, and they're gonna send over the NG. All right, NG uh, decided to board in an oxygenless environment. Let's go send our other crew member there to down their health as fast as possible. And now we're going to go ahead and target their clone bay here. You could have mind control there, but I'm kind of trying to show you what it looks like without actually using MC or hacking to get crew kills. This is a pretty aggressive. It's just to make sure that I killed the NG. All right, there we go. Their entire crew is dead, except for the Mantis. We have plenty of hull to try and just shoot the Mantis down. We actually already know what health it's at, and that one projectile finishes this fight. Now, one thing to be careful with is a med bay or no medical unit whatsoever will instantly recognize that crew is all dead. However, a clone bay does take a while to register that the person being cloned or whatever many clones are in their system are like completely cleared in the queue before it declares victory for you. So you can actually get uh, surrender offers despite the fact that there's uh, nobody alive over there. There you go. Apologies for the uh, audio. It seemed it was not captured 
and uh, intro background music. Anyways, this is going to be a discussion about Ion kills. I will say that Ion crew kills are perhaps my least favorite because they are the least consistent and you pretty much have to be completely safe to perform them. The reason being is that Ion kills are done by stacking Ion damage. If you watch when we get struck by an Ion, you will see that there's a countdown timer on our shield system. That timer lasts for 5 seconds per Ion damage received. So what we essentially have to do in terms of getting an Ion kill is to disable an oxygen system for, to such a degree that it simply um, has denied O2 being on board the ship at all. So if you get struck in the weapons at any point in time while trying to do ion stacks, there's a good chance that you're going to have to reset your entire process all over again. So as I said, not a very common method on getting kills unless you are completely safe. The Char Ion Blast 2 and Charge Ion do have the benefit of they are able to ion stack by themselves, which means that the shots, if without missing, continue to hit the same system, it will permanently ion that system so that it will stop functioning. And what we're doing that to is just charging the O2. We can see that the ship, the enemy ship, is slowly becoming pinker um, as the O2 is not being produced. Uh, oh, I'm actually highlighting the really important information here. Look at the flashing colors that are existing on the oxygen in their shield. Uh, this one is flashing gray and blue on the oxygen, and then the shield is flashing blue and white. If it flashes gray, that means that the system is completely offline, but if it's flashing white, it has only been partially ionized. So it's a good way that you can use that information to know if it's like level 2 oxygen, for example. And the more oxygen that an enemy ship is able to produce, the harder it is to try and get uh, ion stacks to produce a kill. We have a crew kill attempt here, uh, but to help facilitate the ion stacking, I mean, we could totally just use the charge ion ion blast and we would get it quite easily. Uh, instead, we're going to use a little bit of assistance uh, with a combat drone. Now, you could also just use projectiles. Say you have Kestrel C, which is a dual laser and ion stunner. And the idea being that you use the projectiles to take down the shields and thus allows the ion to focus on dealing ion damage to the system here, oxygen, to try and enable a crew kill. As I previously mentioned, ion kills are pretty grueling. Uh, they take a very long time, particularly if not facilitated by hacking, uh, because it relies on landing several shots in succession to get an ion stack. But we do see we're being effective here as the O2 is uh, flashing gray and not white, so we know that it's completely offline. Uh, the level of microwing required here for the combat drone is a lot. Uh, what you actually have to do is depower the drone before it gets into position at the acme of its orbit. And then you toggle it on once the shield bubble is up and get a quick shot. Like so. Though we gotta miss. Uh, if you're too late in doing this, uh, that it's too close to where it's supposed to be right before it fires, turning the system on and off, it may not actually even attempt to make a shot. Uh, if you have been playing FTL, you're going to be pretty familiar with the fact that a lot of microwing is sometimes required. So here we are, like I said, trying to use whatever tools that we have uh, access to to get crew kills for ideally better rewards. Particularly in the early sectors, I mean, the Ion Blast Combat Drone is something that the NGA starts with. Getting a free item, even if it's like the worst item in the game, which is only worth 15 scrap, is still a pretty high reward compared to what you would normally get in those sectors. I mean, it's even possible to get something like a pre-igniter. Uh, so you could uh, end up getting close to 70 scrap value in a single jump. 
which makes it very much worthwhile to, like I said, take any of these opportunities. While O2 kills such as this are pretty tedious, it does have the benefit of you don't have to keep track of where the enemy crew are. It works completely in a nebula. There's no real difference. You don't have to keep an eye on crew. Uh, the only exception I would make is you have to be a little wary about dealing with Zoltans. Uh, there might be a certain situation where a Zoltan is operating in the oxygen room, thus preventing the ion stacks from fully taking effect. Well, we landed a couple shots in a row. Uh... I would uh, not inherently recommend this as my go-to strategy. Uh, hacking, mind control, fire beam even. Uh, much more versatile. Much less arduous. But uh, at FTL, we don't always get to use what we want. And we just make the best of a situation with what we have been provided. And we'll just let this play out until we get our, uh, I'm sure, just reward. Actually, we had a nice little cycle there. There you go. It's uh, about 50 scrap in a Sector 2 fight. Try to go for an O2 kill here um, to exploit the slowness of Mantis repairs. Yeah, okay, one projectile. We're completely safe. So I'm going to try and drop this Mantis as to lowest health as possible. The quick question here is like what level medbay this is. Right, swap in room. Right, 14 is good enough for what we need to have happen. So the problem is that this can become, um, this could be like a level two and heal the Mantis very quickly. So actually I'm gonna hit the uh, teleporter to bait the NG to do the repair. Wow, level two teleporter to boot. Um, maybe we'll do a second swipe. So what I'm trying to do is the NG is gonna be sitting here doing the repair. And once it gets fixed, the NG's actually going to come teleport over. Uh, because they're, again, the game's going to try to teleport twice, and the NG's kind of in the spot for it. There we go. Alright, so because, I mean, it's only level one, but we're going to do everything we can to just kill this NG ASAP. So we're throwing two in there, plus we're going to be draining the oxygen. What we're also now going to do, once we ensure that I've killed the NG, we're going to try to go for the uh, O2 kill. Alright. So, by the time it takes a Mantis to do four repairs on the O2 system, the ship will run out of air. That's kind of what I want to show off with this fight now. Okay, that's the start. Uh, there's definitely other ways we can get crew kills here. Oh yeah, I had to actually close the doors. Actually, it's a really nice setup the way we have it, so the dual lasers don't hit. Um, like the beam will, so we actually have a backup. All right, so that's one repair. Potentially a fire can mess this up. And you do have to be careful with this particular strategy because, like, if they have a higher level O2 system, there's that delay of the projectile 
Um, you know, taking the system down, there's always a chance that they died, which are in a bit of a rough spot. Plus, if it's like a higher O2, the Mantis just continuously repairs through it. So if you don't have a boarding uh, thing, you know, and uh, to try and bait the NG over so you can get a kill, what you can do is actually hit a different system on the ship um, before you hit the O2, and the NG will go over to do that repair. Hopefully I'll be able to show that on a different fight. All right, so we've had two repairs. Here comes a third. So, uh, yeah, normally the NG is like in a position to do the free roaming of the repair. So you hit something like shields, NG comes, does the shields, then you hit the O2. And then the Mantis goes repair, and unless a fire starts or a breach or something along those lines, the uh, Mantis then just kind of sits on that position to keep her trying to repair the O2. So Mantis have like half the repair speed of a human. So you can get this kill with only like four hull. Sorry, five hull, because you know you're gonna do you hull damage here. Alright. Um and it doesn't require anything special, it doesn't require hacking, it doesn't require mind control, though those, both those systems would help to ensure that this uh, kill happens. So this mantis should just die. There we are. Um, yeah, so I just want to like, point out, like I said, it's four pairs for Mantis. Human is close to seven to eight, and then, like, an NG-16. So, like, if the, if the NG's trying to repair the O2, you got no chance in trying to get a kill this way. I'm going to try to do a Masala maneuver here. We'll see if it happens. The teleporter kind of mucks it up a little bit. Um, but this is a strategy that works hard mode with three crew. Um, and the reason it has to be exactly, like, three crew members for this strat is that ensure the AI puts first crew in piloting, second crew in engines, and then third crew goes to weapons. And that's the setup we need to have. If there's any more crew, the additional crew members will actually start funneling over and try and prevent the mind-controlled crew member from breaking their system. All right, um, a little bit dangerous because they do have a flak here, but I think we'll be okay. Just making sure that we're paused. We're going to mind control immediately. And then go ahead and send our hack drone over there. So see, they don't care. They're totally fine that someone's on their ship punching down their weapons. Now, it used to be before the 1.6 that it was 100% guaranteed that this is the weapon that this crew member would take offline. Um... It's less consistent now, but we want to hack it before this weapon fires. Um, so the idea was that the AI will depower the weapon that has the least amount of charge on it. Okay, so because this takes 9 seconds to charge and this would take 10 seconds to charge, this was closer to firing and the AI would try to preserve that. It actually does more aggressively switch over to weapons from being depowered to powered. So it's something you kind of have to watch out for. Anyways, we can hack now though. And no one will come interfere until the system takes one damage. There we go. So what we saw here is we actually were able to damage their weapon system. And this happens 100% of the time. Like, they do not interfere until this is broken with this setup. Um, so we're able to actually become a fairly safe fight. Right? Like, this is now, like, a safe fight for us with only a single projectile. All right, now it's, they're trying to teleport over here. That's kind of hit or miss whether that's good or not. All right, let's see how much we can damage we can do just venting them here and ignoring them. One of the better strategies, or one of the things to note while venting, um, just to turn off the O2, drains the systems a lot faster. I have crew member here, so the doors are elevated. And we'll mind control. Yep, you guessed it. Person in the weapons. <laughs> uh, 
They might make it back. It's not really a problem if they do. Again, with the system being hacked, we're actually able to completely monitor the repair progress. So if we're so inclined, we could shoot it just because it's a decent point of damage here, right? And they actually do have enough to get the flak back up. So we just kind of poke them once. We can also bring on the O2. So you can kind of mix match strategies, right? We're doing like a little bit of Marsala. We can do some of the uh, boarding strategies, just the fact that we recognize that they don't have a med bay. I actually got two repairing. That's kind of interesting. Mind control comes back though. All right, both in the same room. One's at 37 health. So that should finish them off, assuming all of our shots land. Um, something you also have to be careful about, just before we get through, um, is like doors remember. So if somebody was beating on a door trying to get out and then another person comes, it doesn't like the door hasn't been reset. So it only takes like a couple hits for them to get through. Uh, but we've been letting them in and out of the room without much resistance. And then sometimes the doors will eventually reset and give you back the, the full control and full beatdown required to get through them. What we're going to try to do here is an indirect O2 kill. Uh, this is going to work because the room I want to target actually here is the weapons. With the Essentially we can do like a Masala maneuver here. And that actually gets off before they cloak immediately at the start of the fight. Oh, it's nice. As long as there's one damage to the weapon system, it doesn't harm us. So this isn't necessary. It's just kind of give a demonstration of the amount of control. Like that having door control and mind control um, are really strong. Okay, so O2's busted. Angie's gonna fix, because Angie's a jerk. Alright, let's make the Angie work for it a little bit here. So the Zoltan's gonna sit here, try and break down this door to get into the O2, and by the time that happens, we'll be able to mind control them. And they go right back in here and fight this Engie for us. It'd actually be smarter to switch over to the uh, breach bomb at this point. And now we're just waiting. So again, it's going to try and break down the door best it can, get somebody in there to do the repairs. Okay, they got that fixed. It's a little annoying. Oh, uh, we could shoot them. I don't think there's a reason not to. We could breach, um, but that's like wasting items. Dalton's down. A little bit harder to do because uh, NG's fixed things so fast. Speaking of fixing things fast. Really? Wow. Okay. Um, I guess I wasn't expecting 75% evasion from a pilotless ship, but that's just what happened. Trying to teach people a thing, FTL. Why you gotta be this way? Unreal to dodge here. It's okay. These are the kind of fights where I'm, like, super tempted to just, you know... <laughs> oh, you're gonna kick out? Really? That's unfortunate. Like, what level all their systems were at? They're still relatively safe. 
All right, so notice how this NG has stopped fighting. It's because the O2 is too low, and it realizes, ah, uh, that needs to be fixed right quick. So we can just hack if we think we're in danger of taking damage. Yeah, might have taken a point of damage there. And of course, without actually draining the O2, this takes a lot longer. But yeah, they're now out of oxygen. We see the stripes are there. There we go. All right, so we have two crew over here. Um, we can try a Scott Winsy Wilson special. It's possible. Uh, unfortunately, it's an NG ship, so they have Medbot Dispersal working here. But we'll see if we can pull it off um, with the Breach Firebomb combination, I guess. I also have to deal with uh, Mantis Border on my ship. Uh, this is going to be tough to sneak past. Turn it off by a little bit of time here. At least we know like where the drone is trying to target. We're trying to carry that these shots are at an angle. Turn it on and off. We got there. And then uh, mind control the mantis. All right, I'm gonna swap crew in the room. No, you can go back. Try and win this fight. Okay, they're both locked in the room. Three shots coming in. I guess I can maximize my dodge the best I can. It's not great, it's only 15%. Good shields. No, no, no. Doors. That's fine. All right. So we mind control the crew members. They're both in there. Um, we can now hack the piloting so the dodge is zero, and we just put all of our weapons into that uh, single room. Crew dead. Five fuel, thirty scrap. How to do bio beam swipes with uh, out an anti bio beam? They're very tricky. All right, I want to fire one shot because I just want to be down to one mantis before we even attempt it. All right, so I guess we'll set it up as um. And then I'll whiff and then not show this video. Uh, the idea will be that beam weapons won't trigger uh, hull damage if you start the beam already in the uh, window. So we'll fire a single shot and essentially we'll place the hull beam like thusly. I don't even know how much health this crew has. So we actually don't do a whole damage, but we still register the 15 damage from a bean swipe. It did tick up because, oh, I, what I screwed up, I should have just turned it off after it registered. Okay, weapon off. Go through here. So see, doesn't register as a damage. Gets through there. Turn off the beam. No idea how much health this uh, enemy is at.
Okay, line it up. Oh. Timing was uh, a little bit late on the hull beam there. But we've done at least three swipes. So you can kind of see the shot as it travels through the window. It's... There we are. We see we're in a fight. They have three projectiles, asteroid field. We have a single shield bubble. So we actually don't try to go for a crew kill here. I think it's important to appreciate when a fight is too dangerous to go for a crew kill. If we do any destruction to their shields, asteroids will probably finish them off anyways. Um, they don't have like two mantis that can punch each other down into combats very quickly. And like I said, three shots plus asteroids. It's a pretty dangerous situation. So just a reminder that while chasing crew kills, you don't end up taking like um, really high risks. Anyways, um, we'll hack the weapons. It's the most dangerous part right now. And with an MC on the pilot and these doors here, we don't have to worry about it being interfered with, so our shots are fairly likely to land. Uh, even though we got a fire here, again, I'm still not gonna really try go for a crew kill just too dangerous. Not worth it. Alright, O2's offline. That's fine. We can go ahead and repair that now. I know. Let's see. Maybe. Uh, they have upgraded O2. That's a bit unfortunate for us. Engines have gone. Not accepting the surrender. So sometimes you just get random uh, crew kills. It's possible. Maybe the fire will, will like burn down their piloting. We got like no shot at this. Um, but we became very safe. It was fortunate that a fire, which is only a 10% chance of either of our projectiles to cause one. Uh, we can now MC the human to fight the NG for us. It's interesting, if we had more shields, we might have not have got this crew kill because there'd be more asteroids coming. Okay, double fire, single fire. So that NG takes two shots to kill. See where it goes after the MC. It's going to be really difficult for, to, to like track the NG because it's moving around. So again, we got to be patient here. So I actually want to wait for an asteroid here to take the shield room, and then we'll fire two shots to try and kill the NG. Oh, never mind. Piloting burned down. That's unfortunate. So, what can we do now is do nothing. Now we just sit and wait. Um, again, we're not in danger of taking any damage here, and that ship has now been run out of oxygen. So, we went from not going to risk trying to get a crew kill to getting a fortunate 10% shot on their weapons, burning them down, that we might now actually be able to get a crew kill just because we waited. Um, unfortunately, uh, a lot of FTL's efficiencies do come from taking the long, slow route. But we got a crew kill, most likely, that we didn't actually anticipate getting. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go, 21 scrap. That is uh, my tactics, the foundational basis of which to get crew kills without actually boarding ships in FTL.